how much does prayer change God? Can we really change the mind of God by praying? This comes down to some important theological words. And the two big words that this idea involves is God's sovereignty and God's immutability. There's also another word that's important to understand about God when we want to think about these issues. Does prayer change the mind of God? The other big word is aseity. God alone possesses aseity. It means he needs nothing. He needs no one's permission. He needs no one's help. That's what aseity means and only God possesses it. Someone has once said, if you can completely explain God or your God, then your God is too small. There is a tremendous mystery about God. There is a tremendous mystery about prayer and what it actually can and uh, it can't do. Prayer, it's asserted by some, can actually change the mind of God so that God will change his plans to, to the will of those who are praying. Is that the case? These words, immutability, sovereignty, and aseity, have something to inform us about this idea. The word sovereignty means rule or kingship. And when applied to God, it means that God has an ability to rule all events throughout all time involving all people. That's what we mean when we say God is sovereign. When we pray, we are praying to not only a sovereign God, that is, he has a plan, he has a will, and he is powerful enough to unfold his will, but we are also praying to an immutable God. Immutable means non-changing, does not change. We read in Malachi 3.6, I am the Lord, I do not change. And the change there has to do primarily with character and attributes and, and, and qualities that he possesses. He will never lose any of those things because he is immutable, that is unchanging. So when we pray to the unchanging sovereign God, are we actually changing his mind? We see in scripture that it is at times God who puts into the hearts of certain people to pray in a certain fashion. One of the classic proof texts that prayer can or does change the mind of God is Abraham's debate with God just before God took vengeance or unleashed his judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham asked, would you still destroy the city if there were 50 righteous and eventually goes down to 10 righteous and God says, no, he wouldn't. And the case is made that God had changed his mind with every negotiation step of Abraham. Another way of looking at this is that we see that God already has a will, he already has a plan, and that he puts into the hearts of people to pray according to that plan. In that way, people are entering into the heart and the will and the mind of God. And in that way too, we see it's not that prayer is changing the will or the mind of God, it's that prayer is changing our will and our mind. And C.S. Lewis had something quite famous to say about this when he said that he wasn't praying to change God, he was praying that God would change him. So it's, I think it's important to understand that it is God who puts into our hearts, our minds, that we would pray according to his will. After all, we read this in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. So when we pray, we should. We should pray. It is one of those mysteries that God has ordained that we pray so that those people who are lost, who do not know Christ, will come to know him. So I think this is important. But let's not kid ourselves that our praying is actually changing the heart and mind of God because he is sovereign, he is immutable, and he alone possesses a saint.